and we enjoyed it too. So uh, anyway, thank you for being here. I think this is going to be an interesting process, and I'm going to ask Joe Holman, who is our designated federal officer, to kind of come up and offer some welcoming remarks. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I appreciate deeply all of you being uh, willing to serve on this council. Um, this is something we've been talking about and working on internally with TVA for almost a year now. I was thinking last night about when we first having this conversation with the board. Um, but that, this is a, a very unique opportunity, I think, for TVA uh, to really hear from all of our stakeholders uh, from, from everywhere from the differing states to the differing uh, viewpoints of what's important to us in the Valley. And it's also coming at a very critical time, which we'll talk more about in terms of the things that are changing in the world and the impact that that could have on TVA and it could have on the ballot. Yeah, and so today, um, what I really want to try to do is, is level set uh, all of us. And that, in my mind, is we want, I really want to try to accomplish three things. First of all, I want folks to get to know one another. Um, I think we had a great dinner last night. Uh, had a, folks had a chance to get introduced and begin to, to know each other a little bit. We'll do a little bit more of that today. Um, we also want to level set everybody. There are folks, I think, around the table who have a lot of experience with TVA, who understand a lot about how TVA works. Sometimes maybe it doesn't work. Um, and, but there are other folks that maybe have more of a limited knowledge of that. So we're going to spend a little bit of time today just getting everybody on the same uh, leveling field in terms of uh, what TDA is and how we go about doing things. And then lastly, we want to get your perspectives. Each of you are coming from you know, your organization or your viewpoint that you're representing. We want to understand kind of some of what you're thinking to help us guide where we head in the future. Um, we have a facilitator, uh, Randy McAdams, who is going to help us masterfully work through all of that. But um, it, it's important to us to begin to understand the things that you're worried about and how we sync those up with the kinds of things that uh, we are worried about. Um, so I'm hoping with this group that you all can help provide us the same insight and the same input that we've gotten on the stewardship side to help guide us as we're, we're establishing policies and, and trying to navigate uh, through today's waters. So again, welcome. Uh, really do appreciate you being here. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to, to Randy, I think, to, to talk a few minutes and, and get us a little bit warmed up. I, I will say real quick, um, Randy has helped on a number of these kinds of meetings for us. Uh, he's not a TDA employee. Um, we do that on purpose um, so that it, it gives an opportunity for folks to really feel like they can engage with their opinions, uh, including us TVA, and have a good, robust discussion on the topics. Um, Randy is also really good at not letting folks get too far down rabbit trails, which with all the opinions I think we'll have in the room will be a challenge, but I think it's a healthy challenge. So Randy's going to be with us for the journey. He's not just here today. and. Um, certainly will, will help us if we run into any hard spots. They'll come sometime after lunch, uh, and they may ask some questions. Um, Dustin and I have talked, and, and uh, we, we plan on answering questions, but they may have questions for other folks in the room, so just plan on them being. So, start with the basics. Uh, you know, who is TVA? Started in 1933. Uh, you can see uh, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, signing legislation uh, with uh, Senator Norris uh, standing there in the background. That I have a pointer on this thing. There we go. Senator Norris in the bow tie in the, in the back. Um, and uh, you know, they, they set TVA out as being kind of the uh, grand experiment that, you know, Roosevelt envisioned a corporation uh, 
clothed with the power of government, but possessed with the flexibility and the initiative of the private enterprise. That was how TDA was originally envisioned. Um, we've obviously evolved a lot over that time. But if you look, our mission provide low cost power to the valley. There were significant portions of the valley that had no electricity at the time. Uh, and the uh, public for, or private companies that were available didn't want to provide it because it wasn't cost effective. That was one of Senator Norris's uh, biggest concerns, not only for the Tennessee Valley, but across the nation. We're representing them. And there's 155 of those folks uh, that are uh, in the valley, various sizes. Uh, they go up from our very largest, which is MLGW, um, that they themselves are almost a billion dollar a year company, um, down to you know very little teeny uh, uh, companies that in some cases I think only have three or four employees in their entire uh, service territory. Uh, you can see uh, our figures for 2012, nine and a half billion dollars uh, and 132 billion dollar kilowatt hours. The, the numbers for 13 are not official yet, so that's why they're, they're projected. We haven't finalized those. But there's an interesting to note that we'll talk more about later, but notice that's black. Uh, it hasn't changed. It's a bit unique for the utility industry, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, and I'll talk more about exactly the mechanics of how this works, but we could not deliver what we do without these folks. They're, they're the ones that actually make sure the lights stay on in everybody's house. Hanna Village. Um, that's an exception because in general we don't sell to any retail customers. That's our one exception. I think there's 58 folks or something like that that we sell retail power to. Um, all the rest of these are, are large investors. And again, you can see the sales here, 1.6. Uh, and you can see that they've gone down this year. Economy's part of that, but a big driver of that is this customer right here, USCC, uh, which was a uranium enrichment company. Uh, and they were our largest industrial customer. They, had a, they used a lot of load. Uranium refining is a very energy intensive process. Uh, they closed down this year. Um, and uh, that, that's had a fairly significant impact. Now, the other key on where we go is, is like any business, right? We, we need to continue to see our, our growth go as part of our mission. The valley needs to continue to grow. So, economic development is also one of the keys. Uh, and we're, we work with all the state agencies, other government agencies, to bring in uh, additional uh, load, effectively, for us, but more importantly for the Valley, additional jobs for people. And this is a snapshot of some of the things that went on uh, during this last fiscal year. And you can see there was a, a number here of around 52,000 jobs that we either uh, created by bringing new businesses in or through some sort of incentive uh, either help the company expand or ensure that they stay within the valley and this five billion dollars is not our investment but it's the investment that those companies made uh, into the valley. All right now so TDA is a, is a public corporation or federal agency we're very different uh, than a typical um, IOU. Capacity, it's in units of megawatts. Um, and when you think about energy, it's in megawatt hours. So it's how much you're using in an hour's period. Okay? That's an important distinction because when, when we as a utility um, operate, we have to think about and plan to capacity. The reason that is is because we all as consumers right, have this, this uh, need that when we go flip the switch on the side of the, the wall, the power always comes on. Right? Well, if we don't have enough capacity available to meet that, when you flip the switch, the light might not come on. Um, now, the problem with that, and I'll talk about more detail in a second, is 
you don't use all of that capacity all the time, right? But we still have to have it available. And that is some of the challenges that, as we talked about in this group and as Gary works through with the integrated resource plan, that we have to struggle with is, is having capacity is kind of like having a factory that has the ability to produce, but doesn't necessarily mean you're really producing. Um, and obviously, if you're not really producing, you're not making product, you're not making money. All right, so we also have coal plants. Uh, currently, there are 10 of them, 12,000 megawatts. Now, we have over 16,000 circuit miles, a lot of miles. Um, we, we have 101, 797 structures uh, out there. For those of you particularly here in North Alabama, you remember a couple of years ago when the tornadoes came through, we had 128, if I remember correctly, of these large structures taken out that we had to rebuild and replace. Um, we have uh, the voltage ranges go from 500 kilovolt down to 46 kV, but the main part of our system is really built around two structures. There's a 500 kV system, which uh, I think on this map is the black lines, and, uh, I think it's available, and the grid can come down. So there's a whole system across the country of folks that are monitoring those kinds of situations all the time and trying to balance where the electricity is going and how the electricity goes to make sure that that doesn't happen. So when we had the Northeast blackout, for example, as it began to cascade from the Midwest up to Canada and come down the East Coast, our folks were watching that. And we're trying to decide, this is a Joe technical term, when to unplug, if you will, so that we didn't collapse as well. But that's a tricky business because you have to ask yourself the question, if I unplug, am I going to be the one that makes it fall down? Or if I unplug, am I preserving us and stopping the cascade? Tough question to answer. So TVA actually has a special role. We're, we are what's called a reliability coordinator. Uh, and we, this kind of hard to see here, but this kind of turquoise area, which is much bigger than our, 